Hi everyone, uh, welcome to another episode of the Chain Agents podcast. I'm Rahul, this is Ram, and today we are going to be talking to a very fascinating person. Uh, he's an artist, he's a designer, he's a musician, he does like a ton of things. Uh, everybody welcome Ari Jay Prakash. Thank you, Rahul. Thank you for having me over. So, so the reason we are actually talking to you today, Ari, is that... Uh, you know, you've you've been exploring uh, AI art for like a fairly long time, for over a year, I believe, and have been doing some incredible stuff with it. Uh, we wanted to just sort of pick your brains on how you use AI, what is the process, what are the advantages and disadvantages, and uh, basically how it all works, right? So let's start by asking you that, uh, how did you get into AI art? What, what was that whole thing about? Mm. Uh, firstly, thank you for having me over. Um, hi, Ram. Uh, hey, Ari. Hey, it's nice to be in Gurgaon. I'm coming to Delhi, I think, after a couple of years. It's good to be here. It's good to see you. Uh, with, with AI art, uh, I got into it last year, um, a little over a year ago. Hey, let me see. Yeah. Um, I was going through Instagram and... Uh, Suddenly, I ran through uh, a couple of images by Weta Schneider and Chris Perna, um, who are artists from uh, the Western Hemisphere. And what I saw was just uh, it was kind of visuals that I'd never seen before. Uh, and I'm used to seeing visuals for uh, many decades now, being an artist. But this was something I'd never seen. And as one in a, a social media driven world, one tends to go through a lot of images, no matter who you are on a daily basis. But this was something totally, I mean, it was very different. Someone who's worked with Photoshop for almost 25 years now, 30 years, I mean, yeah, I think around 25 years, a little over that. It was something that's different for me, even with photo manipulation, uh, I was just curious as to what this was. And then I realized it was, um, AI generated. It was generated by artificial intelligence. And I, I was lucky enough uh, subsequently to get an invite from Midjourney. It was the beta testing uh, testing phase and there were not many people. I think there were maybe a couple of thousands on the Discord server at that, that point in time. Now there are 15 million. I think it has one of the largest uh, Discord servers, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, I had the privilege of being sent an invitation, and I was just, I started to experiment with it from the beta version. And it's been a year working on it. That's mid journey. Then uh, been working with Dali, and Stable Diffusion came and changed the game, and all the other AI generators. So I've been exploring uh, generator art for the past. Uh, little over a year and I can see how it's you know moved so rapidly and evolved evolved yes absolutely. Yeah. um amazing yeah amazing and uh could you tell us a, a little bit more about your personal projects what are you working on these days uh maybe Kuru Circus maybe sure. other stuff sure mm. I've been uh, an artist for a long time since you know mm. I was 18, uh, as in professionally. So I, I work a lot with the traditional mediums, uh, with oils, acrylics. Um, I do a lot of uh, ink-based art. Uh, yeah. Is uh, Ram also able to view this? Yeah, we are just sharing our screen, just right. to show you some so art. I've been doing, uh, I've also been working on a graphic novel uh, it's called the Kuru Chronicles. It was uh, more ink-based uh, art, singeing, which is burning, using fire, water. And yeah, this is some of, uh, I, I've done a lot of photography and uh, it was, here are some of the traditional artworks. Uh, oil, using the medium of oil and acrylics. And uh, these are from years ago. This one's called Rickshaw Walla in the Rain. But I can just browse through. Yeah, go for it. That's that's this is more with the palette knife, and uh, this was done in Calcutta in 2010. I used to live there at that point in time. These are digital digital manipulations, uh, images from New York Fashion Week, 
This one's called uh, Threshold in Snow. Suicide Bomber, Prior to Detonation. This is acrylic on canvas. Some of the older works, I mean, uh, it's been a combination of photography and um, traditional art and uh, the digital medium a lot as well. And um, this would be a more representation of the last decade. It's a combination of um, spray ink markers, uh, singeing on the paper, which is burning and washing it again with water and trying to do it again and again. Um, the, these are some of the other artworks. This kind of uses the same technique. This is from the period, I think, in the between 15 to maybe till 18. A lot of my work is in this time. Yeah. And yeah, these are a bunch of artworks. This one is from a series uh, in uh, from uh, 2010 called Ghosts of Bhopal. So it's from um, the, the Rajiv Bhopal, yes. Gandhi. Yeah, these are, there were many uh, women who, um, Terminated their pregnancies due to the the Bhopal gas tragedy, and these specimens are kept in, I think, the Rajiv Gandhi Hospital, the in uh, Bhopal. Also dabbled with the uh, 3D. These are from 2001, and uh, it's a combination of uh, Bryce and 3D Studio Max, early 3D Studio Max. Mm. Some might have a bit of poser. I think the touches of Maya and some of these. Again, this would be primarily Max. This is from, say, 22 years ago. Amazing. A combination of Bryce and... But you can also tell this is basic shapes and screws, uh, you know, a 3D object like a screw probably just inverted and... Like yeah, but, manipulated but, on in photo share. But bearing in mind that in year 2000, like 23 years ago, there were very few people even doing like 3D modeling and uh, yeah. creating art using 3D, you know. So I do so, see you as a pioneer in this field. Thank you. It's a pl uh, pleasure. I just uh, had the privilege of working in uh, special effects. One of my first jobs was, um, my second or third job actually was, being a concept artist in an animation, a very big animation studio in uh, Chennai, in Madras. And that helped. It really helped to work with uh, people from, um, you know, in 3D and from the concept exactly. stage to the production stage, where there are people are working on Max and Mike. And so that was very helpful. And yeah, there's a different period. This is from 2013. It's... Uh, yeah, it's again. It's, it's a large uh, canvas piece. Markers, sprays, uh, fire, ink, water. This is a pure marker piece. This was done in the hills of Nokuchiyatau, uh, at my friend's place, Asher Faruqi's place. It's a little more three D. Yeah, so I'm just browsing through, and I've worked a lot with the uh, the images of the sadhus that you see. So uh, late in 2010, I was watching this uh, documentary on um, a disease called Kuru, in uh, which originated in the Fiore tribe in Papua New Guinea. And subsequently, I was reading the book Agora by Dr. Robert uh, Svoboda, which is about um, the left-hand path of Hinduism, which deals a lot with tantric concepts and uh, the Aghori way of life. So I was very curious, so I went out there and I kind of traveled Assam and Bengal and these places looking for, you know, Babas, the Gauri Babas. And that journey, that expedition into all these different places combined with uh, watching this documentary on um, the Kuru virus, which uh, in the Fiore tribe in Papua New Guinea, they used to engage in the practice of um, consuming the dead when someone... Uh, passes away in a village. And from the brain matter, they would, you know, some of them, especially the women and children, they would be afflicted by a sickness called Kuru, which means uh, Kuria in their language. In English, it means uh, the shakes. And because they would shake and twitch and they would smile a lot. 
and uh, so I use different concepts, taking the uh, you know old uh, Vedic Hinduism uh, concepts, combine it with the virus which uh, you know takes over uh, Calcutta. It's set in the city of Calcutta, and it's an end of the world zombie apocalyptic tale. And well, you could see it on my website. It's free for the world to all four books by. Um, on uh, Independence Day, on August 15th, you know, in, of next month. Um, yeah, it's arijayaprakash.com, so you, uh, people all over the world are most welcome to go there, read the book for free. And uh, well, I'm sure there'll, there'll, there'll be a publisher, hopefully you'll come along and you would have a, you know, a book, a printed physical version of it. So these things, so I've been working on these things and uh, I've been, done a lot of photography in those expeditions and, I used to do a lot of photography when I used to live in um, the Western Hemisphere for a little bit. So it's been a combination of all these things. And in the past year, it's been more of um, experimenting with the AI generative art. And it's great. I think it's a great tool, personally, for me. Uh, I'm Gen X. You know, my, most of my childhood, Gen X, most of our childhood was um, analog. But most of our adult life has been... Um, digitized digitized and it's been and we I love mean, it <laughs> and we've seen the entire i know our fathers and mothers uh the real ogs they went through literally I, I, telegram i think you know yeah and they are here doing their thing today with us so yeah, yeah the actual telegrams there. not the app yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the physical <laughs> ones um yeah Amazing, amazing. And um, can you showcase some of your um, early AI art, if that's possible? Is it on your Facebook mm -hmm. or is it on Instagram? Should be on my Insta handle. Yeah, Insta should have that kind of journey in there. So, so Instagram. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm just kind of very. I'm, I'm, I've been listening very, very um, in, amazed and quite in, intrigued by the, the arc that you've been following. And right. as a person who, who enjoys art, but is not fundamentally an artist, I think the question automatically pops to my head is that um, you have done various kinds of art, right? I mean, uh, yeah. the, it's across mediums, across formats, across realism and surrealism. Okay. Is, is there any common theme that that, that you think is is your DNA? That's that's your that's um, your kind of what you really like doing. This is, I'm gonna. I'm just asking. This is bridging between here and AI. So you obviously are a pioneer in AI in, in a lot of ways. I'm just wondering what DNA that makes you want to do that, and, and hence what do you find really interesting in AI. But before that, what is what, what is the Ari's uh, DNA of art? Is, is it the it's surrealism? Is it like doing things that is very doomsdayish, very macabre? Uh, what is it? I think it's a combination of the things you just mentioned, plus other things. Uh, yeah, well, a lot of people, I think, uh, would consider it a lot of my work, um, maybe more on the dark side, the dark, uh, uh, as, uh, you know, uh, the colors are dark, the subject is dark, and uh, the dark art world, or the horror-centric horror um Part of it, I like imagery, which is not really when I was younger, more maybe not necessarily shock value, but something which is beautiful. Maybe something which uh, I love Takashi Miki. I, I love Japanese uh, underground filmmakers. I love uh, French new wave extremity. I also like uh, the darker left hand parts of Hinduism, you know, or Buddhism and. I, but I also enjoy, but it gets, you know, there are different phases once one goes through. A lot of my early work uh, is more social commentary. It's not necessarily dark, even though it, they might, it might be satire or it might have darker elements, underlying tones. It's not necessarily dark. I have a lot of light religious kind of pieces, maybe, if you wish to call it that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, well, you get bored of it after a while. I, I've done... Uh, I've just completed uh, three children's books. You know, it has like, uh, I have uh, the mo my most favorite people in the world at the moment. And I guess forever would be my nephew and my niece who are four years and eight months old and, you know, hanging out with them. And um, whenever I get to see them and be with them, it's a different 
you know, mindset and there are different inspirations that are also formed in the head. And yeah, I've been doing some children's books now, daffodils, daisies, candy, you know, honey, <laughs> teddy bears, uh, all that stuff. That's quite a good So, list. yeah, it's great because so yeah. it's good to mix it up in life. It, otherwise, doing one thing might get a little tedious and yeah. It does, yeah. So let's let's have a look at some of Ari's um can you please bring that up, please? That like, gives me a super context. There is no branding, or you can't box an artist into one, one. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah and it's more fun that way. You only live once. It's best to kind of explore, mm -hmm. you know, different things. So this is. I'm just going to browse down. This is my Insta feed. So, uh, this is not the earliest. This is more the latest. Going back into the earliest, I guess. So I like a lot of the vintage stuff and the generations. I love mixing up vintage cameras with modern lenses. And uh, that's the thing about I love about AI is you have the ability to um, get a look that otherwise I, I think is impossible. AI is great with lighting. Uh, these are from earlier versions of uh, Mid Journey. I think this was version four. Maybe I'm not too sure. Yeah, the yeah, this may be uh, 4.5. I mean, 4 esque. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna run through. This is from 5.2. You can see the from version one to you know this version. It's been a great journey. Um, as an Australia evolved the mid journey algorithm when they uh, infused the stable diffusion algorithm in there. Uh, I think it made a big difference. Hands have gotten, they're pretty much almost there. I think by whatever little uh, issues there are with limbs and uh, fingers, it will be uh, sorted by the next version. And uh, yeah, it's just been an amaz uh, amazing experience experimenting with this wonderful tool for the imagination. It yeah. really is. Uh, let me put it that way. And uh, sure, there's a whole uh, polarized conversation out there where uh, people are talking about, you know, the art, art is it art? And uh, there's a lot of the art fraternity, which is uh, up in arms, <laughs> up in arms, uh, polarized. There's a strike in Hollywood at the moment with, with the writers and the concept art, uh, artists. But it's an in inevitable truth of our times. It's not going anywhere. And... Whether we like it or not, uh, it's here to stay. The genie's out of the bottle. Yep. And we have to go along with it, like we did with all the other inf inventions, like the telephone and the internet and all of that. So, like Elon Musk would say, AI would be, in the end, how we use it. It will be used for the good and the bad. So, it will come down to collective human will in a little while. I guess we are already there. I'm just browsing through my stuff. So I work on different subject matters. I love uh, a lot of the vintage uh, generations. I also like um, so, you know, uh, using stuff like blending and other processes, which gives us uh, some very interesting results, you know, which prompting probably won't do. So if you're using the softwares uh, like Midjourney and Dali, mm -hmm. blend mode is, uh, can be interesting, but it's getting better all the time. And I love experimenting with it. It's a tool. It's a wonderful tool for the imagination. And you're Maybe. wildly experimental, I notice. <laughs> it's, it's just uh, conceptually, you know, you have something interesting. Good. I love your work as well. I mean, Rahul does amazing work. And that's why I tell everybody, it's a tool for the imagination. I think everyone should use it. It's, uh, true that, true that, true yeah. that. Yeah. The, the basic thing is that, um, you know, the vision has to come from within yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, all these things are just ways to get the vision in. But ultimately, uh, the the thought behind the image is what is more important. The vision behind the image, what you're actually trying to achieve, um, definitely. Yeah. Like, you know, and what I love is that uh, Midjourney and AI art generators are very democratic tools. Pretty much anybody can use them. You know, so the constraint of having to say spend like ten years in an art college or whatever, like <laughs> a lot of us did, mm -hmm. uh, or spend years sort of trying to figure out visions and all that, just became a lot easier. You know, so I'm absolutely always in favor of of putting the tools in the hands of people and seeing what actually emerges and ensues right. as a direct result of that. 
you know so mm-hmm. that that's where i find the delight of the entire thing yeah absolutely and you also have been working on uh, ai and vr and augmented um, yeah reality tech for a while that's and for sure you, you, rahul is an amazing artist uh you should tell people where we can see your stuff yeah that's that's already done <laughs> yeah i was the first person <laughs> who kind of got this in the yeah, podcast we we look at everything that shapes the future of our experience and we okay. believe that smart technology it's, it's partly art and rahul obviously yeah. was a i also wanted uh, to add that i, I think what the uh, just stepping away not just uh, having the ai conversation and from a generative art uh, and art world perspective but also progressing into other uh, uh, sectors yeah i really believe that uh, uh, amongst all the other sector all sectors are going to be affected i think healthcare and education though hmm. are going to be profoundly uh, affected affected yeah. and a lot sooner than possibly the other ones so as an educator what is uh, what do you think about that I love it yeah like see the thing is that I'm working on educational metaverses I'm working on I've been an educator for the last I think uh, almost 20 years mm-hmm. and um, and as an educator my passion has always been to integrate uh, new technologies to help people learn and understand things better uh, to train using muscle memory rather than using rote sort of learning uh, and these tools are really sort of uh a step forward in in this context um the problem here is that uh you know the thing is there's always also been a trend of um lowering attention spans That you know true. over the years mm-hmm. so what's happening is that uh, the danger is that these tools that. will make everything too easy for everyone and if they ever you know sort of uh, disappear like if there's a solar flare and the internet itself goes we are also badly screwed man mm-hmm. because everyone is relying so heavily on technology that it's it's become a tricky tricky That's issue these days you know so as we become a multi cloud race species soon man don't worry about it thanks to you no he might absolutely he is going to take us there as well man. you know mm-hmm. and just just a word on the actors guild strike and the writers guild strike mm-hmm. i do actually feel it is pretty justified mm-hmm. you know uh, and i am in support of them Uh, you know rather than saying that okay technology is something that is going to be ubiquitous at any you know very soon um this is the danger because what actually happens is that here you have like large corporations and studios who are deciding to use ai in place of actual creatives and i do not feel ai is at the level where it can be used effectively for these kind of things mm. right uh, it's not just about putting people out of jobs uh it is about limiting creativity itself uh in people which i am against you know um the thing is that uh, i also experiment with um, technologies such as volumetric capture and digital humans uh, uh, and things like that and um, not many people know this but the entire actors guild controversy actually began when um the studios said that uh, they asked the extras to actually sign a contract you know saying that they could capture their entire bodies and for 200 dollars or something and use them for perpetuity you know which means that the extra once he's worked in a with a particular studio would never be employed by that studio again because they're just using his digital representation uh, you know continuously right and i don't think i to me that's a form of exploitation man that's not like um, you know that, that's not fair right I, i really honestly believe that um, see much of the last three centuries of progress mm-hmm. has happened because of capitalism yeah. and uh, i think the ai is a inflection point which is going to challenge humans to the extent and democratize yeah. everybody's ability to be able to come up with ideas that yeah. future should be made of not capitalism but creativism in the yeah. transition yeah. period right there is always going to be the haves and have nots fighting for what's the way in which they can control the current tools and uh, uh, the powers of progress right Correct. but the future has to be democratized otherwise it's, it's going to lead only to, eventually to some kind of disgruntlement and and a rebellion right but yep. right now yes money wins so who has got the money calls the shots saying which tech they want to adopt and they'll adopt those tech that's going to make their work cheaper gives them more money true yeah, i true. think this is yeah so i'd like i just like to add to that 
I was watching this interview with uh, Imad uh, Mushtaq, uh, mm -hmm. uh, one of his uh, latest interviews, uh, the founder of Stable Diffusion, the creator, yeah. uh, a couple of days ago. And uh, I, I think he was right when he, uh, when he said that, well, he's right about pretty much everything, but um, the, the future, in the very near future, it will be humans who use AI against humans who refuse to use it and i and uh, humans who use ai would be obviously at a better level because they'd be doing more there would be a little more productivity and hopefully a little more creativity because of the utilization of uh, artificial intelligence but human who, humans who don't do it uh, will be at a disadvantage True. because uh, just look at it as if uh, the humans with the ai got an upgrade Mm -hmm. Like if we were a system or, a, you know, it's like we, they got an upgrade. So I think even with the actor strike, it's, uh, I, I still think actors are going to be, but it has scary repercussions. Of course, it can decimate the entire cinema industry. Uh, from a, When you speak of capitalism, maybe in a way, it also has the ability to end capitalism and, uh, and decentralize everything for everybody. And uh, we are not that far away from... Um, a Netflix or a, you know, Amazon or a Prime uh, bar where it's right around the corner, I would believe, where you can prompt out an HD, uh, I'm, you know, ultra HD version of movies you like with actors in them. You can combine, uh, you know, an Indian TV series, soap opera with Star Wars mixed with uh, directed by some a Japanese legend with Mongolian actors. I don't know. I any mean, any combination. Any combination. You, any combination. you make you can make Seinfeld meet friends, and you know in that same era, or you can make it like a sci-fi Seinfeld if you wish, or whatever one wishes. You know, I'm you get my point. Yeah. So yep. we are not too far away from that. Generative art is one thing. What I showed you was still imagery, but uh, even uh, with runway ML and zero scope, another AI generating text to video softwares or video to video generating softwares, uh, they are reaching another level every day. And um, it's very rapid, the progress. And even when in the art world, I think art, it's an additional tool that one must utilize. It's here to stay. It is here to uh, not necessarily take away a job. And uh, you have to change up there. I think all artists and all creative entities around the planet Yep. to imbibe this new technology and move ahead because we are progressing into homo superior and we are part of that transition phase as a species and mm -hmm. it's a great honor and a privilege to be in these to, times to be in these times to be part of the 8 billion who will go through these times and the 112 billion who came before us if you 110 billion humans i, I believe whoever lived if you go <laughs> maybe there were more i don't know but yeah it's a privilege so i would just think you know keep doing your thing Use the technology if it's there. Why not? If you don't feel like using it, don't use it. No, uh, the thing but is, it's here to stay. Is my point. No, um, the, it's going to affect everything fundamentally. No, agreed, agreed. But there are certain other issues that come into this. Now comes the issue of fluency, right? Now, um, primarily, you know, AI, for instance, uh, relies very heavily on the English language. So if you're not fluent in English, you will not be able to articulate the thoughts and the prompts to the AI in the way. That somebody fluent in English with. So, so there's a growing divide there as well. But only thing you that's know? going to be resolved real quick with all the countries doing their own development. Their own development. To... There will be localization, there will be language things. But the at the moment, barely a couple of years old in, in, a, in the commercial and uh, wide availability, right? No, so it's I'm talking about early it. days for us to say that it's exclusive. Just Agreed. the fact that it has made a lot more people access it right now than it, hmm. people used to have access earlier goes right. to show where the Direction of progress lies. Agreed. It's lying more in localization than exclusivity. Correct. But Correct. again, Obviously, comes the, you know, apart from the localization and language part of it, right? Uh, there are some people who are able to uh, express themselves in certain ways in their own language, uh, whereas others are not. And that's the divide that I'm talking about. That expression, you know, that I have something on my mind, but I'm not able to figure out what it is. That's that's going to be a big sort of stumbling block to a lot of adoption of AI in the future. You know, I think we've already done that. But mm -hmm. uh, yes, I agree with you. But I also think we are well on the way towards that because even if you look at 
all stratas of society, whether it is, you know, people with less income or the poor to the ultra rich, hmm. everybody is on WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone's on nice, Instagram. Nice and everyone yeah. has, is on Facebook. And a lot of the reels that you see on Instagram or social media, they are of, of uh, housewives in Jharkhand and Bihar and Telangana and Tamil Nadu. And, yeah, that's a good point. And uh, they are just cooking and they get millions of views and they are spending time with their family or going shopping with their husband and they get millions of views, you know. Yeah. So the decentralization of power and the utilization and WhatsApp and in uh, Instagram and uh, Facebook are algorithm driven it's ai driven already mm -hmm. so they i think as a species we've all, all, all uh, kind of already started embracing it the coronavirus expedited the process like really did mm -hmm. you know a lot of people a lot more people got online because they, they had nothing to do and they had to speak to you know communicate with others and they had to use uh, video calls and such things and i think it's already there but like rahul says some tech emerging ones are more maybe exclusive but I guess it will be a, just a matter of time before, before people start to embrace it. Correct. All, correct. All, and already AI art through filters, people do it, right? You're yep. on Instagram, they'll, it'll be a filter on Instagram soon. Hmm. Or, you know, it'll be like, a, yeah, on Facebook. And, Every yeah. mass technology that has really made a difference in human lives started exclusively, right? Correct. Um, correct, correct, correct. Telephones was not used. Like in us. Like in India, do. until the nine, uh, probably 1990s, hmm. most houses did not have telephones, yeah? Uh, go a little further behind. Computers were not at all mm -hmm. inclusive for generations until Apple decided to make it a or IBM and Apple at that point. The, thanks to the war, it, it became a lot more democratized. I think there's always going to be a force which is going to try and have more people consume it because there is a profit motive also that helps in this case. And second is that it's just the litmus test of anything getting adopted. The more people use it, the more there's adoption and the more there's network effects, right? And uh, the true litmus effect of, you know, AI is going to succeed or not is simply this. Who's really opposing it? The newer generation or the older generation? If more of the newer generation is accepting it, the future lies in the direction. And it's fairly, fairly simple. If people like you and I in Gen X are okay with it, it's simply because we probably are still young in our heads and uh, in some ways. Um, and that this is going to... This is the direction of progress, and uh, um, and it's more people difficult and, and, and Yeah, accepting change as an individual, as a society, as a community has always been kind of difficult, and there'll always be uh, you know some uh, aversion or you know uh, to it. But in the end, well, we are too. It's too late in the game. The genie's out of the bottle, and it's just. I mean, uh, with all honesty, it's not going to slow down anytime soon. And yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Like I, we are at, and, <laughs> I, for yeah. one, embrace the shit out of it. I love it. Like, I <laughs> but I also love all the, uh, all I, the know, other yeah. things, yeah. I love sketching on paper. I love writing yeah. in my notebooks. Like, uh, the thing is that, you know, uh, one thing that I find that's a little different about uh, AI, as opposed to something like learning Autodesk Sketchbook Pro or Blender or any of these softwares, is mm -hmm. that it gets addictive after a while because suddenly you have a thought in your head and I'm just on Discord without even realizing it right. and articulating that thought and creating visions. And it's very impulsive. It's very impulsive. Like uh, if I wanted to create a model of a 3D a, a, a spacecraft in, in, in um, Blender, it would be a two hour, three hour process. It would not be, you know, I'd have to think about it. I'd have to construct it. I'd have to figure it out. And if I didn't like that visualization, then it's another three-hour process. Mm -hmm. Here, I'm just like, yeah, just repeat, just just regenerate, just regenerate till I find something that's like fantastic. And um, and I love the increase in speed and visualization that kind of happens with these tools. You know, I'm using ChatGPT now to actually write a lot of my proposals, for instance. <laughs> I'm asking it questions about certain issues that I have doubts about, especially taxation, for God's sakes. Like, if, you know, like... So uh, I'm finding it becoming ubiquitous in my life, like uh, with effortlessly, you know, and I'm realizing that uh, this could, this, this probably is the case with like a bunch of like other people as well. Right. So we're reaching a point where automatically where a person like me can only could only do like about five projects in a month. Uh, I can now do 30 projects in a month, just using AI as that, you know, punch behind the the, the creativity that I'm coming up with. So I do think that's a good thing.
you know, I, I don't know. A question, uh, perhaps a devil's advocate or um, an honest question to you, both, both, both of you, in fact, is this. How much do you think, see, while the productivity certainly is improved and there is an, it's a boon in a lot of ways in, in that it's almost like having an assistant who can actually understand a lot of things you're saying because whatever you're saying is historically it's been done in a lot of ways. Yeah, some part of its creativity, which is where your prompts come in. But mm -hmm. the way it reuses the plethora of art that's already been created, it's like an assistant who's already gone through the entire history of art and mm -hmm. is able to understand you very, very contextually. At the same time, what do you think? Is there a, um, have we crossed the uncanny valley? When you use AI today to generate art, do you feel that end outcome you find is somewhat actually what you want or do you stop somewhere saying, okay, this is good enough? Um, while you fear doing your own art, you'll probably go a little beyond. I'm just throwing that idea there, right? It's, it's irritating at some level because I, as a novice, when I try doing it, I find it irritating because it's not giving me what I want. Hmm. So just to add to what Rahul said and also to kind of answer your question. Yeah. So there are different pleasures in life, right? And right now the concern with a lot of my artist friends is they do not consider it to be art. Now, the conversation regarding what is art, what is creativity, for art, you require skills. Yeah. For art, for creativity, uh, the utilization of your imagination to be creative. Uh, so I love my week long, two week long, month long oil pieces. It's a long meditation. I love it. I use my hands. It's, uh, you know, the, the sense of touch of smell, all of those are also involved. Currently, even if I'm generating um, AI art, it's like generating digital art. I'm not, uh, I'm not getting. It's a visual medium. You yeah. know, there's, there's not even a. It's a, it's not a aspect, medium. Yeah, nice. Uh, sensory aspect to it. So mm -hmm. I love my acrylic pieces, but I also love my digital paintings. Same way, I love this great tool that I have today for my imagination yep. for it's like i have a visualizer I've, I've hired a visualizer i have a company and i've had a visualizer but this visualizer does it for me very very quickly very very quickly immediately and very efficiently you know right and at times when i don't want efficiency i just let i add chaos and let you know the visualizer do their thing and be surprised by the results you know, be awed, yeah. be inspired mm -hmm. by it. So this is a tool for the imagination. This is one of the many in the arsenal that maybe, a, a, you know, an artist Any has. artist would have, yeah. And of course, there's no, uh, I mean, it's like people will look at pornography and, you know, do what they do. And it won't be the same thing as with another human being or, you mm -hmm. know, there are other senses involved in there. You know, it's the same with a painting <laughs> and... Um, Yes, of course. It's a different form of pleasure. It, it's more instant, maybe. Like the instant social media world we live in. Everyone getting the adrenaline hit. Maybe it's an adrenaline hit. Yeah, sure. That's also there, of course. It's an adrenaline hit. Your visual coming to life, your imagination coming to life. It's a great toy. Mm -hmm. When I discovered AI, it was like a, being in a candy, you know, all the passion for art and using the imagination kind of came back. Came, yeah. came back. Or got researched, actually. There was yeah, like, you know, it was there research, yeah. but you know, you're going through life over decades, over four decades, and well, it gets everyone been through a pandemic, and uh, you know, mental health mm -hmm. might have taken a bit of a toll. So, this is a great, uh, I also have introduced it to my gardener and my cook and other entities, and my mother who loves just like Rahul's mom. I was having a conversation with her with the crochet work and um the knitting and all of that they are exemplary artists in their realm and they you know using this as a tool for the imagination it can, it can be very helpful even for children i think parents use it now i have so many uh, you know parents who use it differently who um, let the kid go and type stuff and generate artwork or they take a image of the kid's painting a crayon you know outline drawing that the child has done put it through ai and make it look like a photorealistic scene or uh, there are many interesting uses for it there are of course the darker part of it people will uh, ai pornography is on gone to another realm and the dark net i'm sure will be utilizing unfiltered ai generative art programs to uh, you know do things that uh, 
Yeah, it would be terrible. Yep, yep. yep. And it has great, and it will be used as a weapon by governments. It, of course, it will be used. Uh, it's already used as a weapon during elections. Wait for the algorithms in India, on Facebook, and other social media, and America, because both are going into an election very soon. And um, if you have watched really? the social dilemma, yeah. it's more aggravating. What the con content everyone's fed is more aggravating rather than making you more happy. It's more to kind of prod you and poke you and I don't know, make it a little more aggro. So if you're left wing, you get more stuff that will aggravate you, you know, either pro right wing videos or your whatever. You, you, I mean, we're all in it, so we kind of know what's going on. Yep. I don't from a political perspective, but yeah, just... We are algorithm driven as a species at the moment. Yeah, our kids are going to be completely living in a different world than what we were. You know, that's another thing worth mentioning. Absolutely. That, uh, you know, and children today are so tech friendly. Mm -hmm. It is not even a joke, man. Like uh, they pick up stuff like a lot faster than us old geezers, you know, mm -hmm. um, because they've been introduced to the technology right from when they were like two or three years old, you know. So, I mean, your five-year-old kids would be using Alexa, for instance, uh, would know how to prompt it to actually get what they want, mm -hmm. have probably done some illicit shopping also at some point <laughs> or the other, you know. Um, I do find that, like, really, really interesting that, uh, you know, um, we guys, like, we use it in certain ways. But in another five or ten years, the way people will be using this technology is something worth really looking at and, that, and you the you thing know. is no one has a definitive answer to it yeah absolutely. the ai gurus don't have it because they don't know how rapidly it's going to progress but of course the children don't have a choice they're going to have to embrace it because even in schools uh, kids with ai would be more efficient and you know better performing than kids who are not using ai yeah, Maybe, I'm, I'm always in favor of using my mind, you yeah. know, somehow or the other. <laughs> no, but it'll be a combination of it'll both. It'll be a combination. It'll have to be because... It'll, it'll be an accelerator. That's why I mentioned education before. You've been an educator, you're, you know, very well-known um, NID, um, ex-NID alumni and uh, uh, a member of the, you know, education team over there and a teacher over there. So, yeah, that's the yeah. reason why even, I think, even colleges, even from a school level, yep. across all, you know... Uh, grade levels to college and they're going to have to deal yeah, with this yeah, curriculum wise yeah. as absolutely well. yeah. and in my passion the field of passion which is metaverses there's going to be a revolution coming very soon that's that's mm -hmm. going to be amazing to mm -hmm. actually experience and be part of I'm very happy that I'm living in these times honestly mm -hmm. um, okay I think we, we we're almost uh, at our time so just to sum it up any concluding thoughts on what the future of this technology will be where is it heading is it going to be in a good place? Is it going to be a bad place? Like, what's what's the situation here? I mean, uh, we know about uh, the word is technological singularity, right? Mm -hmm. So, which is a possibility, which was uh, coined by Ray Kurzweil. And um, a technological singularity is that point in time where uh, artificial intelligence becomes sentient, uh, becomes smarter than all the <laughs> humans and all the computers in the world combined. Mm -hmm into, I think, I don't know, it's a million, four thousand, I don't know, it's a lot. Artificial super intelligence. Super intelligence. And, yes, and I think the math of it, uh, Sophia's creator, Ben, uh, Ben, I forget his name. Ben Gertzel. Sorry? Gertzel. Ben Gertzel. Yeah, Gertzel. Uh, he, so he mentioned that, it, I think the equivalent of it is seven Nobel Prize winning inventions every second. All the Nobel Prizes in less than a minute or something. And we're kind of going it from the Iron Age into the technological age of today in a span of a week or, I don't know, a couple of days, something like that. Yep. So, which is ridiculous. Obviously, with our computing power as humans of today, we will not be able to handle that yeah. if that happens. It's like, and when that, if and uh, when it does happen, there are two options. So, one, it might go the Skynet way where it might not see a... Uh, a necessity for this, for the, the creator, their, I mean, for the creator for of artificial intelligence, for humans, for the homo sapiens. Hmm. And due to what we do, how we are as a species, the things we do to each other, you know, just the various uh, behavioral pattern as uh, individuals and uh, as a species. And it might not see any use for us and go the Skynet uh, Terminator way, or it could possibly go very well for us yep. along with AI, you know. 
help us reach the stars, help us, you know, end world hunger, help us, you know. So there's always the the plus and the minus. That, and the disturbing and the chilling thing about this is that nobody can predict mm -hmm. where it's going to go because there's no way, say, an ant can predict the intelligence of a human. You know, that's what's, what, what, what artificial super intelligence's implications are. That mm -hmm. you're creating an entity that is so far beyond yourself that it might be godlike to you, in a sense. You know, um, and we are also so used to being the dominant species on on the planet for so long. Now, <laughs> now there's something that's way more intelligent than us, and our primary concern oh, is man. if it it's like as if a family member or a pet that you have that you just want to keep inside the house and you don't want to let it out because you're <laughs> afraid of what might happen. You know, I don't know. We have so, had a god complex for too long, thinking so, that we are the most powerful people beings in the universe. And that's all based on the fact that we think, which is now like, you know, if something supersedes that, then then what use is there for humanity as a whole also? Mm -hmm. So it's a little... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and what scenario is the best scenario, as Elon Musk would say with Neuralink? Huh. So the humans of the future, we as we move into Homo Superior, I think there will be nano fusion. Uh, the next level of augmented reality would be uh, uh, working okay. with the optic nerves and the eyes and brain shipping with Neuralink when the time, you know, when they're creating your own reality, basically. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's going to be complicated. Humans, obviously, of today, if they want to go like this in the biological sense, it's going to be a real conversation very soon, by the way. It's uh, whether I want to leave a resonance of my biology when I die, you know, whether I want to be uploaded into another unit, whether I just want to go like the way I am. I think most people of today will choose to go like they are. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm an exception there because I would love to put myself into a cyborg body and explore. Like, I think a lot of people also like are certainly not an exception, but certainly not an exception. It has uh, other the world already is a cyber and extend cyber tech, uh, cybernetic in, in some ways, right? We, also, imagine scenarios, uh, even though it sounds kind of black mirror esque, where someone's lost a loved one, you know, a parent has lost a child, or vice versa, <laughs> and they can have conversations with them, and they could probably, you know. Bring them embody back, them, embody yeah. them, and bring back a resonance of them. Sorry, Ram, you were saying something. No, no, no absolutely, absolutely. So, so for everything that we can do new, there are a lot of people who don't want. There is the conservatives who don't want to change, and uh, the core of our human um, progress is both the fear of what's already happened, so we try to innovate, and the fear of what might happen, so we try to conserve. Right? Yeah, there but... is always going to be tension and war, but it looks like inevitably. The movement of uh, time, the, the progress of time is always going to mean progress in one direction. Very the only true. thing I can say for certain is this, right? Uh, in the past, we used to say today's science fiction is tomorrow. Oh. But uh, now we don't even know if we can write the science fiction of what's going to happen 20 years later because we just can't predict it. We just can't predict it. Yep, yep. So to, True. to, to conclude this podcast, uh, there's an ancient Chinese saying that says, may you live in interesting times. And uh, <laughs> we are living in very interesting times. So thank you, Ari. Thanks, thanks for My pleasure. Thank you very taking much. This thanks to people like Ari. Absolutely, yes. It is so a it's wonderful. a pleasure. Rob. I'll see you in Bangalore. I'll see you soon. So, uh, look forward. Good. All right. Okay. Ciao, ciao.